Hi again, everybody. I'm Jamie Allison. This is the Big Idea, Big Moves podcast. This is the destination for high performers. We talk to people from different genres, different, different niches, just people doing really cool things in their space. We talk to lots of athletes. We talk to entrepreneurs. Um, and again, just anybody that's kind of really doing really cool things that maybe we can take some of what they're doing and apply them into our own lives as well. Uh, today, we're actually doing a, a reconnect, which I know everyone's going to be uh, really excited about. Just before we jump into that, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that um, we have a connection with Epitome Sportswear. Um, and uh, part of the reason that they uh, connect really well with us is that it's not just kind of, you know, high performance stuff. It's stuff for anybody wanting to, you know, maybe you're going out um, to uh, uh, go for a hike yourself, but maybe it's also going to your kid's hockey game or soccer game and, and uh, just good stuff for that. Um, the other thing that's really important uh, to us that is important to them is that they give back to the community they serve as well. So they're working to impact the inequities and opportunity for girls and women in sport. Um, and so a portion of their proceeds goes directly to organizations and initiatives that support um, girls in sport as well. So you can check them out through our Instagram profile right to that. Um, or you can go uh, to Epitome Sportswear. That's E-P-I-T-O-M-E sportswear.com and, and check it out. And uh, I think you can get a, a code off of there too, off of our Instagram and, and maybe save some money too. So, uh, so today, really happy to have have back on the show. It's been a little while. We were just saying, Lindsay, before you came on that uh, uh, it's been a little bit since you've been on. People really loved hearing from you last time. Um, so Lindsay Webster is a, a Sky Running Series champion uh, 2022. Um, she's got now uh, these numbers. I hope they're still accurate. They might be even more now, but we've got nine OCR World Championships, four Spartan World Championships. And basically, I think if people um, are familiar with um, with obstacle racing, she is seen as basically the the uh, the GOAT, the greatest of all time. So she'll probably say that's not the case, but I will tell you that she probably is. Um, and she just finished the 2023 Spartan Trifecta World Championship in uh, Sparta, Greece. Um, and for those people who don't know, that that is if you've done a spartan it's basically a sprint a super and a beast kind of all connected there um and so she, uh, fantastic work there but um she also has a new uh, initiative that i know we'll talk about a little bit today where she also um uh, has a nutrition and kind of recipes site uh, especially for for people that uh, are active and it's called the fittest foodie so we'll talk about that as well um but maybe first of all Lindsay, thanks for taking the time i know that uh, you guys are really busy but it's nice that you're home for a little bit and we could connect today yeah, thanks for having me back on. It has been a little bit, and uh, what an intro! Wow. Well. Yeah. Give me well, the warm fuzzies. <laughs> it's, well, and it's and it's easy because you have um, so many things that you've accomplished, and and actually that's what I was going to talk about a little bit to start with is you were in Greece recently, um, and I think anybody who's followed your stuff, and hopefully they will after this if they haven't already, and and see um, that uh, you know Greece uh, looks like you had an even kind of different experience than you had before. Um, it sounds like it was a really great time. Tell us a bit about it, and and um, you know obviously the race, but also some of the other stuff that that you got the the chance to do. Yeah. Greece was amazing. Um, so I had never been before. It was one of the only things kind of left on my Spartan race bucket list that I hadn't yeah. done yet. Um, but it is, it's a really challenging weekend of racing. So like you mentioned, you do three different races, sprint, super and a beast over the course of three days. So you're racing three days in a row. And the final day is like the longest one. So you're quite tired already. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure why I haven't done it before. I guess, um, yeah, I don't know. Ryan has gone, my husband. Yeah. Um, and the first time he went to Greece, he didn't like especially love it. He, I think he was expecting it to be this travel destination, which some areas of Greece are. But yeah. um, when he went to Sparta, he found it quite, it was like very kind of run down. And he was quite tired when he went. He just finished Eco Challenge. <laughs> so yeah. that's like days of racing. Um, so can't blame him for being a little tired. And I think he just kind of wanted to be home. And so anyway, this time we went back and we were determined to make it a good time. So we did some traveling around that and we loved Greece this time around. We're like already planning the next trip. We've got a whole bucket list of things we want to do. And, um, uh, one thing we thought was really cool is that I guess the race, um, takes place in Sparta. Like you mentioned, it's a, it's a small city, but I guess it's like the biggest amount of tourism dollars that they get all oh. year from the Spartan race. So the whole town is like in on it, knows what's going on. All the people who own the restaurants and stuff are really excited to have you. They want you to sign all their 
things that they have at friend they get really excited if you give them some like race memorabilia like a medal or I don't yeah. know it's just like a really fun vibe and um I guess because of the tourism money that it's brought in like Sparta has changed it's had like a massive overhaul even since Ryan was there last he was oh. like wow I've seen so much growth and now it's like turning into this beautiful city but more of a destination so so yeah, yeah. we really well. like it very cool. And and that's, uh, so the people who are maybe listening, if, if people do follow OCR, they know that Ryan, your husband is, uh, um, is obviously is very similar to you in that he is like won tons and tons of, of world races and eco challenge and all those things. And, uh, um, you know, on the men's side as well. So, um, you know, recently, I guess for, for you, um, Lindsay, uh, you know, I, I want to put it in air quotes, but you kind of retired from OCR for a little while. Um, <laughs> I don't think but, I ever actually retired, but yes. <laughs> but yeah, you did, but you still kind of jump in every once in a while and dominate a race and then come back out again for a little while, but you did sky running for a while there too, and focused yeah. on that. And, um, for those people who don't really un know what that is or understand it, cause it's obviously in Europe, it, you know, lots, lots more people know what it is, but um you know is that was that a big reason why you decided to kind of pull back from OCR a little bit was to more focus on that or, or how did that work out definitely I think uh yeah an obstacle racing I just I've been doing it for a long time and I had sort of checked a, a lot of my goal boxes um yeah. but my favorite way to train is by running in the mountains like running along ridges and technical terrain you get like the views that's kind of a reward for your training and uh yeah yeah, and then I discovered a few years ago this there's this whole series, the Skyrunner World Series, which takes place in Europe. Um, it's like highly competitive, like some of the world's best trail runners um, compete in this series. Um, yeah. yeah, super. And it's basically, yeah, that sums it up. It's super technical running up and down mountains um and they call it sky running so i basically became pretty obsessed with that <laughs> yeah, yeah. last year um took like i pulled back from obstacle racing and i was like i'm just gonna focus on doing this other really cool thing that i'm inspired by this year and uh didn't expect to do that well like i think yeah. i thought i thought i don't know it's like it was so cool because it's all these girls that I follow in this other sport, but have, and I admire them and I look up to them and I look at what they're doing for training and they motivate me. But obviously because they all live overseas, I've never had a chance to compete against them. So it was just like, yeah. so surreal to go over there and compete against them in person. And, um, I had no, I think I was hoping for like top tens. Um, so when I was doing pretty well and like making the podium at most races, it was pretty surreal. And then like when I, when I actually crossed the finish line of the final race, I had yeah. no idea that I'd won the whole series. Oh, um, really? Yeah. So I guess the guy who won, he was like celebrating when he crossed the line. And it was like so far out of my brain to even fathom that I could win it. Um, yeah. That I had just never thought about it. I never bothered to like tally up what they probably was. they probably yeah. thought you're just uh no big deal no yeah big deal. <laughs> so I finished I think I finished in third that race so I crossed the line and I was like oh that was an awesome race I'm happy to finish third and then they were like you won the series and I was like what wow wow <laughs> so I think yeah I think it was like I think they were expecting this big celebration from me and it was sort of like anticlimactic <laughs> 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 anyway. all innocent though all innocent um so is it something that you want to like are you going to continue kind of doing that i know that this year you didn't kind of go into the last little bit like uh, you, uh, it it sounds like you've kind of figured it you figure out your race schedule i'm sure way ahead of time so uh, is that something that you'll continue doing a lot of those races or yeah i hope to i started doing um some of them at the beginning of this year but yeah. my body was just like not feeling good at the beginning of the yeah. season and the sky races are typically like anywhere between three and seven hours in length like they're they're long and you're you're yeah. beating yourself up the whole time like running up and down these yeah. mountains and jumping off big rocks and stuff and uh and I just was like I don't know I kept signing up for another one thinking oh I'll like you know it'll motivate me and I'll work my way into fitness and what I actually just needed was like a break yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. I ended up just taking a few weeks off and then I started feeling a lot better after that but um yeah, yeah so I started doing the series this year pulled back from it yeah. um but I would love to do it again or at least some of the races again in future yeah. years yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, so 
OCR is changing a fair amount right now too, Lindsay. Like one thing is even just the the lengths and all of those things are changing. And with the kind of Olympic piece and how it's it's not um, it's not a, a an event on its own. It's kind of a combo with what used to be pentathlon, I guess. And just um, what are, what are your thoughts around that? Because I I think that's uh, it'd be interesting. Like, would you even think of trying for that? I know you do multi sports, but there's some different, very different sports in there and. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. So the, that's a whole conversation. I actually worked on the board um, with the, I guess the board that's trying to get it into the Olympics. Yeah, um, yeah. And my whole position as part of that board was to basically be the voice for the athletes. So yeah. I set up this whole committee and it was supposed to be so that the athletes could kind of have a say in and how things went. And then they ended up kind of pulling this move where they were going to get it in through modern pentathlon, which the yeah. athletes no voice in and I don't think the pentathletes were excited about it and the obstacle racers were not excited about it and now it's a big question mark because I guess pentathlon might actually not even be part of the Olympics yeah. um which will yeah. throw us under the bus too so yeah it's all kind of that's a whole big question mark right now but um needless to say I'm not involved <laughs> no and, and uh, yeah I'm, I'm sure it's well, and it sounds like, uh, you know, when it gets to that point, it's difficult even just to know what's going to happen anyway. So we'll wait. Yeah, see, it's, um, it gets pretty complicated at that level. Like there's just so many moving parts. There's a lot of sports yeah. politics and it's, it's pretty hard to get a sport into the Olympics. So I think that the yeah. board was just sort of like trying to get us in any way that yeah, they- shoehorn it in a little bit. Yeah, a exactly. Way. Yeah. So I understand why they did it, but um, yeah. Yes, anyway, but yeah, yeah, lots of changes happening in obstacle racing, like some are super exciting. They actually, so they had the first, uh, I guess with this whole Olympic movement, um, they're starting to have these sanctioned races now where mm -hmm. there's just, yeah, a lot more rules and everything. So they had the first one this year in Belgium, um, yeah. which I think went, went pretty well. I think the athletes especially really love the obstacles that they put forward there's like there's some I guess growing pains with a couple little things that um need to be changed but but that yeah. was an exciting kind of step forward um, yeah yeah and... well and lots of um even just yeah like they're all shorter races but timed and doing them very differently which is which is nice and I know um just recently in a couple of the the bigger events even just for not the elites they've made lots of changes generally so uh um, but most of them seem to be received pretty well now I think after um you know after that first little kind of the change piece I think that uh, the people yeah. go through so for sure yeah we're um we're curious to see what will happen next year and then I guess Spartan Race and Tough Mudder were the two big kind of names in the sport but Spartan has since bought out Tough Mudder um, yeah so that was interesting so then anyway a lot of the Spartan races this year were like a very short format they were like this 3k format um yeah but Tough Mudder just announced a race that's taking place in February and it's going to be eight hours long like a lot oh wow five yeah. mile laps um wow and so a lot of us are really excited for that that'll be like yeah. the next big thing that i'll be training for so yeah awesome awesome <laughs> so um, there's always something happening that keeps you on your toes in this sport <laughs> yeah i was gonna say you must always like how do you how do you figure out your calendar and it like because it, it's you do so many different things too and i'm sure you have to train differently um in between them all so uh, how do you figure out especially considering it's between you and ryan probably you have to coordinate a lot of that stuff how, how do you even set that up for a year or do you just kind of take things as they come a bit or how does that work for you yeah, usually the race dates get announced around, um, I'd say like January. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and we'll just, we'll get really excited around that time of year because you've had a little break, you've had an off season yeah. and you get to plan your next year. But um, yes, a lot of the races now are actually happening like in the Middle East. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that means that our season's a little bit never ending. So like this year I have World Championships is in December in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. And then we will have this Tough Mudder race is actually in Saudi Arabia. Um, oh, really? Wow. Yeah. And that's in February. So, yeah. So that was an interesting one to decide whether or not we were going to attend or not. Ultimately, yeah. we decided we're going to go. Um, and you can get away from the the uh, winters here and get into something that's probably a little bit different if you were going over there at February. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so how you decide the schedule. I don't know. I guess we wait for all the races to be announced and then we sort of decide like which ones oh. we want to do and uh yeah. get really excited and sit down yeah. and, and then 
get training. But yeah, there uh, go. Well, yeah. so so the other thing is that in between, um, you know, I know I know from when we've talked before, you you like to you like to bake, you like you know doing some of those things just to even have kind of that's that's your other stuff. I, I guess you had said that's where you actually kind of can re-energize and stuff is when you're doing some of those things, and and you've you've translated that into to a couple of other things. That just tell me a bit about why you know where did your kind of fittest foodie piece kind of come in and and I know that you know it's just something you enjoy so sharing that passion with other people why decide to do that and what well, you know, how'd that come about yeah um yeah I mean so I don't I don't make any money off the blog it's literally yeah. just a passion project of mine um yeah. but a dream of mine has always been to like open a cafe bakery that's what mm-hmm. I want to do after racing and so Ryan and I actually ended up a couple of years ago like purchasing a building um mm-hmm. and we live right next to a ski mountain and it's like right at the base of the ski mountain yeah. um there's like only a couple other shops there but there's really nowhere up there for people to get food after like a day on the mountain and then the summer it's mountain biking and all the trails start there um yeah too for like all the hikers and everything and uh, a lot of the cyclists also for like road biking that's kind of like a hub for where they start from. So it's a really good spot for a cafe. But um, right. anyway, we bought this building. Um, the building needs a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so the problem is that when we first bought it, we were like, oh, like we'll hire people to do all this stuff. But Ryan, is his uh, job before being an athlete was as a mechanical engineer and he's super yeah. handy. So when it actually comes time to like paying somebody 30 grand yeah. for the job, he's like, well, I can just do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> but that comes with it just taking time as well. So ultimately we're just gonna like do the work to the cafe that um it needs by ourselves. And in the meantime, it's actually being run as an Airbnb. So it sort of yeah. just like upkeeps itself. And then in between guests, we do renovations and uh and it's super fun. But um I got really excited about having this cafe and then my like outlet for (laughs) sort of that um, creative energy got put on pause. Um, And I was like, well, I'm just really excited to share food with people. Like how else can I do this? I just like my Instagram feed is full of, it's like half athletics, half food blogger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So why not, right? Combine them and... <laughs> yeah, you know. it's funny. I have all these athletes who I'm really inspired by. And then like the other side of that is that I have all these food bloggers and I'm super ex- inspired by them. Like uh, yeah. people with hobby farms and stuff. So... Um, that's, like, well, and you even, I mean, you travel all over. You probably are exposed to lots of kind of cool things in these spaces that you go to because you have the, you know, that great lifestyle that comes with what you do that you get to go kind of meet other people and and be able to kind of see other places doing this too yeah exactly um so yeah so I put this yeah put the food blog together again don't make money from it and this summer got pretty busy so it sort of I stopped putting things on it as much but now that winter is rolling around and I just have left outside work to do and and stuff and I have had a little bit more energy to work on it lately so yeah big plans for that I know you yeah. had Corinne Coffin on the podcast when she's like a yes a sports yeah. nutrition I was literally just thinking the other day oh it'd be really fun to do a collaboration with her because she's the certified yeah. nutritionist yeah and yeah she like, loves that stuff she talked all about kind of um you know that's a real passion for her too because obviously it's her mm-hmm. profession but she uh she loves it as well so that exactly. would that would be really cool yeah absolutely yeah, so I don't know like what I don't know maybe if people listen to this and they have ideas for what kind of stuff they'd want to hear like I kind of thought maybe like what a really good pre-race meal would be that would give you everything that you need to get fueled up for your event or like how to eat before an event and sort of like do a collaboration with her I haven't yeah. even talked about Oh, I'm sure she'd be all in. I should, I'm sure she'd love that. So, um, well, and, and how do you, I mean, aside from how you eat and all of those things, I mean, wellness generally, like that kind of whole life wellness, I know you do, you do more training than most most us normal folk would ever do. (laughs) Um, (laughs) It's your job. And so, so, but just generally, like, how do you, how do you keep, you know, all of those things. I mean, you've got, you've got family that I'm sure you're very connected with and other relationships and things like that. How do you, um, how do you just make sure that you feel like you balance some of that, even though like a big part of your job is actually being able to, you know, to have physical wellness at least anyway. Right. Yeah. I think, I don't know, I guess for me, like mental wellness is, 
as much a part of it. I feel like if my mental wellness is sort of off track, then I can't perform physically at my best. And so like keeping that balance in life is super important to me. I would also not really classify myself as like a type A personality person, which I think helps a lot. I think mm -hmm. I think that being a professional athlete like forces you to have type A habits because yeah. you have to be motivated. And there are certain things that you have to do in a day. And a lot of the times it's like, you got to force yourself through a certain amount of reps or like things that you, yeah, don't necessarily want to do. Um, you need a lot of structure, but, um, yeah, I think not having a type A personality allows me to just be like, oh, I'm going to go do this thing where I eat burgers and drink beer with friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe will like affect my performance tomorrow, but will also like keep me feeling mentally in a good space like <laughs> yeah yeah well you can kind of not not everything is compartmentalized right like it's like it it is um it's interesting that you say that that I think a lot of people if they only saw you competing might think you're more of like a type a like a lot of a lot of athletes you know are like that but I, I like that you've said that it's um uh you you kind of have to have those habits that are more prototypically type a but that doesn't mean that you know to to recapture yourself, you don't want to be with a small group of people or just read or do, you know, baking or whatever it is that you get your energy back in. And and I think there's a lot of people out there that would would um, like to hear that because I think people automatically assume in order to to have those things, whether it's in business or in athletics, that you have to be kind of type A to be able to do it. But I think a lot of people, that's not the case. Yeah, I think um, especially now that our season's getting so kind of long and extended. Um, yeah. I mean, there are definitely points in the year where I'm pretty focused and I'm, you know, trying to do all the right things. Like right now we have world championships coming up. So I am yeah. being a little more regimented in my sleep schedule and like putting focus into that. Not super regimented because again, I find if I'm overly regimented, then I'll, it, it just kind of like drains the energy that yeah. I have for yeah. training. Um, so there's a balance there. But um, then there's other times in a year where I'm like, okay, I have like a month and a half between races and I just finished this big event. So now I'm going to give myself like two weeks to just do, like I'll still train and everything, but I'll... Yeah, but not the intensity. and Yeah, just kind of enjoy the success that you've had and um, just do what your body feels like doing as opposed yeah. to like what you have to do. And yeah, yeah it feels yeah. Like <laughs> Most, <laughs> yeah, I like to have something that way, right? And and uh, that so you your stuff is primarily outdoors. Has uh, and and maybe uh, like I know that you you come from an athletic family, and a lot of kind of outdoors athletics are part of that. But um, like, is that always something? Like, did you grow up doing outdoor athletics all the time? Is it something that you know? Is, is it just a coincidence that you happen to excel at things that are more kind of out in nature and things like that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess my parents, we had a sailboat growing up. Mm. Uh, and so every weekend we were like up on the sailboat. And so my parents never wanted to put us in sports that took place on the weekend. So things like, I guess, hockey or soccer, or I guess a lot of other sports that are indoors. Yeah. It's like all your, I don't know, the championships weekends and the tournaments. Yeah, they're all weekends. <laughs> So um, for us, it was always like, yeah, these other sports, I guess, that we were enrolled in that um, took place on weekdays. Of course, sometimes we'd have events on weekends, but not like, yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> so like I did figure skating and then I guess the events are on weekends, but it's in the winter when the boat's out of the water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we did cross country skiing. Um, yeah, I did rowing. So yeah, a lot of like outdoors, I guess, sports that were, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well. Cool. <laughs> oh, and and with the um with the opportunities that you have to be to travel and all of those things because you get to kind of go all over um is there like what do you see at at some point um i mean you talked about your transition being hopefully at some point you know you'll you'll have the cafe that uh, sounds like it's also in an area where you'll still be able to do those things you you love at the same time um is that kind of like at some point you know and and i don't think that'll be anytime soon but at some point there'll be less and less opportunities to kind of go for 
big kind of athletic events all over the place. And is that, um, you know, how do you, how do you start to get yourself prepared for that when so much of your life, it has been what you're, what you're doing now and, and traveling and going to these big events and things like that are, um, you know, how do you, how do you get yourself mentally ready that at some point, you know, you transition to something that's maybe a little different? Yeah, that's a good question. Like, I feel like, uh, every year that I get the chance to still be doing this and traveling cool places, I like, um, I'm pretty grateful for it, especially last year, like with the sky yeah. running, like every event that I went to in Europe and got to experience all these cool new countries was just like, it's like, this is incredible because I know too that I guess someday when I have the cafe, the first couple of years will be like just yeah. me stuck inside 12 hour work days. Um, yeah, like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, the life of an entrepreneur instead of a life of an yeah. athlete, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess my, like, I do love being at home as well as traveling. And I think yeah. travel is like such a thing that Ryan and I enjoy doing together. We'll always find places for that. But we've also, we also say that like, oh, I mean, not that it's really a downside to our job, but sometimes you do get tired of having to do all that travel um yeah and we live in this beautiful place where like there's we're so lucky that so many events are close by here too like so many good events like Vermont's so we're five miles from the Vermont border um yeah and have a lot of like we love gravel cycling and so there's like a ton of gravel bike events there in the summertime and in the winter there's schema races and so we always say like one day when we don't have to travel anymore like for sure we'll book ourselves a couple trips um throughout the year yeah. we never will stop traveling but like I think we'll also enjoy just to be able to do like the local events that right now we don't necessarily have time or get to attend because we're always away at other ones <laughs> so yeah, yeah so I think I hope that one day when I'm you know hauling butt in a cafe <laughs> <laughs> Like we'll definitely still try and find that balance where I'm booking myself like a couple trips throughout the year and I still, yeah. um, you know, having little fun events that I I want to do that I'm working towards like on the weekend. I think like exercise is always going to be a part of my yeah. fun lifestyle. And when I open the cafe, I want to like have a a wall of segments, like Strava segments. So it's like they start from yeah. the up to the top of the mountain or something <laughs> like yeah something. yeah well I mean how can you not have that with the lifestyle that you lead I mean that's and that's basically why you're kind of you know you, the cafe will be where it is so that's uh uh that's a great uh that's a great thing um you know so uh, you know one of the things that um you know that I noticed and and probably that you just said right there is that also as you do more and more of them you start to realize how those little things make a difference and I noticed um actually I think it was Ryan posted it in the last one about how um this last race for him he noticed a lot more of those things and tried to remember the the small parts of the race and the friendships and all that kind of stuff do you find does that does that um become more and more that way as as you get further along in your careers um yes I I think I realized I don't know like a couple of years ago that it's all just part of the race experience and yeah. especially when I retired quote unquote yep. from OCR yeah. I was like one of the things that kept bringing me back to like a few races here and there was that I just missed like the community and my friends and I think when I was yeah. full-time I just like never realized how much a part of me it became after like seven eight years of doing it like you just sort of take yeah. it that you get to see all these people every weekend but then when I wasn't doing it anymore I was like oh I miss that a lot yeah, yeah. I would just do the race not to necessarily like do well in the race but just so I could see my friends. just to see people yeah 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 but then other things too like I really hate start line nerves and I sort of put that into perspective a few years ago that like that's also just part of the race experience that you have to like kind of embrace and then look back you like look back on it at the end of the day and you're just like so physically drained but also mentally drained because that all like <laughs> takes I don't know like if you just go do a hard workout at home you're never as exhausted as like after 
a race. And I feel like half of that is like because of the whole, the, the mental energy, I guess. That it yeah, is. that's probably right. I mean, it's not just the, that everybody's pushing you through the race. It's probably that it feels that much more wearing on you by the time you're done because you're so on from a, Two days of nerves. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, it's like that extra jolt the entire time. So <laughs> um, so the the we always ask you know everybody as as you know to have a couple of things that um, we can leave kind of uh, with the, the audience and there's lots of stuff here but I thought um, especially considering it is something that um, uh, you have a great perspective on both as an athlete and um, and and just kind of from a, a food nutrition standpoint um, as things get really busy whether there's somebody like you who's you know preparing for events and things like that but also just people that. Um, always find it difficult to be able to kind of keep on track with kind of nutrition or, or as much on track with it as they can. Do you have a couple of tips as to how you do that when maybe, you know, things are so busy, it, it becomes more difficult, I guess, or, or at least people think it's more difficult than it was normally? Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. So when I'm at home and life gets really busy, one of my favorite food bloggers that I follow um, is called Pinch of Yum and mm -hmm. just look her up on Instagram. But so she... Yeah. She's like, I guess, a full-time food blogger. Her recipes are like always delicious, but she has this whole series called the SOS series. And so she's got two kids and it's like for people with busy lives or who are like maybe going through a period of whatever, they just don't have time to like cook. But anyway, so she puts together these recipes that are super simple. They're typically 10 ingredients or less and they take like under 10 minutes to make, but they're yeah. really healthy and delicious and so like anytime that we're at home and we have a ton going on and I'm like I don't have time to cook this elaborate healthy meal I'll usually just like whip out one of hers <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah. all of the times it's also stuff that you'll just like have in your pantry so so I love that series by her that's like a huge one that I like to do um Ryan and I sometimes also get hello fresh boxes I don't oh, know yeah. if you guys yep is yep. that like yeah um yep it's, it's if it's not HelloFresh to other people, it, um, I'm trying to think of what some of the other names, but it's it's the prepackaged kind of healthy healthy uh, yeah. ingredients, I guess, right? So yeah, right. And I don't really understand. Even I don't understand how like it's so different. Like usually, so I'll make like a shopping list for the week, and I'll be like, oh, here's some recipes that I want to make, and I'll go like buy the ingredients for them. I don't know why, like having this box makes it so much easier like they give you a recipe card and they give you all the ingredients but I guess the ingredients are like a lot of times they're already chopped or they're already measured out and it just like takes a lot of the thinking out of it it makes the whole process faster and then also if I'm like get caught up in something like work and Ryan gets hungry instead of him getting hangry waiting around for like what are you gonna make for dinner I'm like just go make a box and so a whole like make dinner half the time or like the other half the time I'll do it because he's busy and we just sort of like makes it easier to divide and conquer because there's no like yeah. question mark there about what you're making and yeah um, yeah I like that you can like pick on their website now it used to just be like you get three choices but now you have like 20 choices to choose from yeah yeah you see all the ingredients and they give you all the nutritional content so like you can pick healthy options too yeah so yeah. We'll do that and then for travel um, right now we're really into cachava, which is like a plant-based, I guess they're like, I don't know, they're like pre-mixed smoothies, which sounds, wow. sounds gross. You just have to <laughs> add water to them, but actually they're really good. And okay. so we are like pretty hooked on them right now for when we travel because like airport food is so expensive sometimes, or sometimes you'll end up when you're traveling, like, um, we'll just be at the airport and there's all these like unhealthy options yeah. like walk in front of your face that you're yeah. like that looks really good that looks really good but I find if I'm if I like have that with me when I get hungry and I can just like add water and then I'm not hungry anymore then when I'm walking by this aisle of croissants yeah right? yeah <laughs> <laughs> then, like I won't be as tempted yeah. to get one because I'm not hungry or like we'll bring leftovers with us to the airport so then like if we have a meal with us we're like not going to go we'll buy one and spend thirty dollars on one because we've brought our food with us so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so pre-planning pre goes a long way when you know that you're yeah. going to be tempted <laughs> like, right? don't go so. grocery shopping when you're hungry uh, exactly <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's uh, it's it's a general rule now so well yeah. uh, you know uh, 
that's that's awesome, Lindsay. Thank you so much for that. And um, and actually aligned with that. So if people are following you, first of all, because obviously um, uh, not only should they follow kind of what you're doing in, in your athletic stuff, there's some really great content on on your uh, your stuff as well. Um, and then the <laughs> other side, make sure you do plug your your kind of blog and and uh, those pieces as well, so that people know how to follow that. So what would they be? Yeah. So my personal Instagram is Lindsay Dawn Webster, Lindsay spelled with an A-Y at the end. Um, and my food blog is The Fittest Foodie, which yeah. Ryan came up with that name. He's great at puns, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. And we'll put those, uh, we'll put the links directly in too, so that you, they can uh, kind of um, go directly to those, follow both of them. And also I know that it links through to the, the backend webpage and everything there too. So they got lots of great recipes and everything I could see and lots of, uh, lots of good content there too. Um, and obviously I, I guess it sounds like your next event is, is February, anything before that, or is it February is probably the next big one? Um, December is real. Oh yeah. December. Just, Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Don't worry. I can barely keep track of my yeah. schedule. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so December and then February next. All week. right. Okay. Well, yeah. again, um, thanks for doing this. I know you guys are, are crazy busy and uh, and you were feeling a little under the weather before this. Nobody would ever know. You sounded them, by the way, Lindsay. So thank you. Thank so you. I feel uh, a lot better today. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And to everybody else, if you haven't hit subscribe on the podcast, do that now. Uh, we have great people every week, just like Lindsay. Um, and, uh, you know, again, thanks very much, Lindsay. And thanks to everybody for listening. And we'll talk again on Big Idea, Big Moves. Thank you. Wow. <laughs>